I'm just going to tell two hopefully short uh, stories about uh, Aboriginal people I've represented uh, as a criminal defence lawyer in the Territory, um, in which I've uh, raised, which issues have been raised which can now no longer be raised because of legislation that was passed in a single day sitting in the House of Representatives. This is part of the package of legislation uh, which has been referred to now as the intervention legislation. Uh, one of those uh, acts, uh, which is not a temporary measure, it's actually a permanent measure, which has got a terribly long name, so I'll just refer to it as the Faxia Act. Um, one of the many things it does, uh, as well as getting rid of the permit system, is to uh, prohibit a court from taking into account any matters of customary law when sentencing uh, in the Northern Territory. Um, so the first story I'll tell about is a guy who is a direct descendant of Dakia, who lives on Groot Island and uh, very proud of being a direct descendant of Dakia and, and takes his uh, customary law obligations and uh, status very, very seriously. And Groot Island is uh, towards the, um, I suppose, one end of that country where the events which eventually led Takia to court in Darwin took place. Water Island in that area goes down towards Groot Island, whereas Yurkala and Go is at the other end, I suppose, of that general area. Well, uh, this particular man is in his 50s, I think, early 50s. Uh, lives on a, an outstation off the Rowell Highway, which is a highway which runs from the mining town of Adungula to the Aboriginal, past the Aboriginal community of Murugu. And the big trucks from, from the um, manganese mine go, go there 24 hours as, as a day. There's some other traffic also that goes from Murugu, from Adungula to Murugu. And uh, a death had taken place in the outstation and it was a period of mourning and ceremony to, to do with that uh, mourning. Some young fellows from Amurugu had been sort of, I suppose, hooning, as best expression I can do, say, uh, from coming from Ayungula, where they can get alcohol, or could at that time, and had been going through the outstation, disturbing people there and causing problems uh, for people still trying to go through that mourning process in the community. So what my client did was he took some spears and he went out to the middle of the rail highway and he was effectively setting up a one-man roadblock and he was stopping cars uh, that were travelling up and down the road with the, with the intention of stopping the sort of uh, misbehaviour by these young men who'd been going through the community. Well, of course, as uh, one of the mining trucks came up and there was concern expressed that the police were called, the police came. Uh, in significant number, uh, and ultimately, uh, my client was. Um, there was a bit of a standoff for a while, and it, my client ultimately was arrested and taken to uh, into custody. And a month or so later, the matter came to court, and eventually it came to the magistrate. Uh, unsurprisingly, uh, my job. Uh, as I saw it, and, and, and it was completely common ground among the prosecutor and the magistrate, was to inform the court about the, uh, the functions that my client felt he was doing, because he definitely believed that he was carrying out a responsibility on him as a senior elder, uh, with responsibility to impose the correct behaviour on those young men uh, according to Aboriginal law. Uh, that matter was accepted by the court, uh, and uh, other people, other senior people in the Grand Island community confirmed uh, that he was indeed a person of significant standing, and all mentioned the fact he was a descendant of Dakia, and that that should be taken into account. And it was. And um, the court took into account that although normally this would be very serious behaviour, uh, threatening people in the altar of the police and others. Uh, with, with spears and holding up a, a road, but um, that was something that should be taken into account uh, in trying to uh, accommodate non-Aboriginal law with um, uh, Aboriginal law. Now, 
if that matter came to court today, uh, we'd get to the point of telling the story about what happened on the road, and then uh, if the defence lawyer tried to say and, uh, and tried to tell the story of who he was and why he was doing what he was and so on, he would have to be stopped, and uh, that material simply could not go before the court. Second story um, is 